You are listening to the Cellulite Site Podcast, episode number 13. Is foam rolling an effective way to reduce cellulite? Welcome to the Cellulite Site, where we meet cellulite challenges with care, confidence, commitment, community, compassion, concern, consistency, and courage. And now your host, Bree Cox Kennedy. Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to this week's Hot Topic episode. It's a little bit controversial because today we are diving into a topic that has sparked a lot of controversy and debate. Foam rolling as a method to reduce cellulite. Have you heard about this? I'm sure you have. There are thousands, hundreds of thousands of opinions across the internet that are all over the place, with each source claiming to be right. So, Let's explore the speculation and try to reach a conclusion for ourselves. One of the main reasons I wanted to focus on this topic today is because during my daily yoga session, my Wi-Fi went out and the video I was following was no longer available. I wasn't quite ready to wrap up my workout, so when I glanced over at my foam roller, I quickly grabbed it and put it to better use other than just lying under my bed. So. Let's go through this article and see if that spontaneous decision was worth it or if my foam roller is destined to be a dust collector. (laughs) Now, don't get me wrong. I do love a good foam rolling session, but it usually comes around about once every six months. (laughs) However, this time was different. It wasn't one of my traditional foam rolling all over body sessions. Seems like seconds after I grabbed it, I found myself suffering from self-induced roller pain, but I'm talking excruciating discomfort while focusing the pressure from my waist to my knees. Of course, that's the area where I'm putting a lot of emphasis and focus on for cellulite reduction, the same area that I've been ignoring for years. (laughs) I couldn't believe how locked up my muscles and fascia were. Given that I sit for long hours during the workday and uh, admittedly relatively sedentary for about eight hours a day, it did make a lot of sense. My body was screaming at me and I realized there had to be a correlation between my tight fascia and the cellulite that I struggle with in those same areas. Taking deep breaths through the pain but remaining in place while the foam roller released the tension I couldn't wait to research and investigate my theory. Well, it turns out there doesn't seem to be much controversy over foam rolling when it comes to employing it to prevent the onset of DOMS, which I'm sure you know is delayed onset of muscle soreness after a challenging workout or assisting muscle recovery. In fact, the foam roller is highly regarded by physical therapists, chiropractors, personal trainers, team coaches, on and on. There are many physical benefits for foam rolling, and I've usually felt pretty relaxed and flexible after performing a full body foam rolling session, particularly after long flights. So I don't know why I don't get it out more often, but after this recording, I'm going to. But it does seem that there is universal consensus that incorporating foam rolling into your routine can provide benefits and contribute to overall muscle health and well being. Some of the key advantages are noticeable improved flexibility and range of motion. Foam rolling helps lengthen and stretch muscles, which can enhance flexibility and increase that range of motion. It also provides a reduction in muscle soreness. So by applying pressure to muscles, foam rolling can help alleviate soreness and stiffness, promoting faster recovery after workouts. It enhances blood flow. The rolling action increases circulation, which delivers more oxygen and nutrients to the muscle, aiding in the recovery process. Foam rolling can also help break down scar tissue and adhesions, which can restrict movement and cause discomfort. Regular use of foam rollers can help reduce muscle tightness, making muscles more pliable and less prone to injury. Foam rolling targets the fascia, the connective tissue surrounding muscles, bones, and organs, essentially everything in our bodies, helping to release the tension and reduce the muscle knots. By relieving the muscle tightness and imbalances, foam rolling can contribute to better posture and alignment. 
The process of foam rolling really truly can be relaxing if you give yourself time to do it and are not in a hurry. And this actually helps reduce stress and promotes a sense of overall peaceful well-being. I really love that uh, foam rolling is referred to as the poor man's massage or the quick man's massage. You can just grab it and go. You don't need an appointment. But they're relatively inexpensive and obviously can be used at home. So they're very much a convenient option for ongoing muscle maintenance and recovery. So while all of these benefits are great, there does seem to be limited scientific evidence directly linking foam rolling to long-term cellulite reduction. I know, I'm so sorry, ladies. Most studies are focusing on foam rolling for muscle recovery rather than cellulite. So the studies just are not there. However, let's look at the bright side. If temporary cellulite reduction is sought after, perhaps for wearing shorts for the day or going to the beach, spending some time with your foam roller in the morning might be beneficial. Let's take a look at why. If we were to look at a cross-section image beneath our skin comparing normal tissue and cellulite, we would obviously see noticeable differences. In cellulite, the fat cells are much larger than those in normal skin, causing the tissues to expand and bulge out. Additionally, we would find fibrous bands of connective tissue running through our subcutaneous fat. So cellulite occurs when the skin above these bands is pulled into the deeper tissue, creating that dimpled appearance. Women often have less supportive connective tissue than men, particularly on the buttocks and thighs. In women, the connective tissue is arranged vertically, whereas in men, it runs horizontally. When collagen fibers deform the fascia, fat deposits start to protrude. Therefore, it's the structure and behavior of the fascia, not just the fat, that causes cellulite. This explains why even slim women have cellulite just as much as curvier women. So if women are seeing an improvement in their cellulite after a foam rolling session, chances are it will likely be temporary since the foam roller squeezes out the fluid in the tissues and flat flattens them temporarily. Foam rolling doesn't reduce the amount of the fat in the cells, and eventually the fluid will flow back into the tissues and the cellulite will reappear. That being said, there is strong evidence to support that fascia training can improve circulation while increasing and promoting lymphatic drainage. When you lie on a foam roller, you're applying pressure to your fascia, similar to when you're squeezing on a sponge. This can help the fascia release the built up fluid and then reabsorb fresh fluid, which might improve the tissue health and reduce swelling. So you might be wondering, what is the difference between foam rolling and fascia training? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it can seem to be a bit complicated. So stay with me here as I guide you through the differences. Foam rolling is a specific technique used in fascia training, but they're not entirely interchangeable terms. Foam rolling by definition involves using a cylindrical foam roller to apply pressure to specific areas of the body. The primary goal of foam rolling is to release tension in the muscles and the fascia, which can help alleviate muscle soreness, improve flexibility, and enhance recovery after exercise. We've covered all of this. So during foam rolling, you use your body weight to apply pressure to the roller and move it back and forth over the targeted muscle groups. So set that aside. Let's compare that to fascia training. Fascia training, by definition, encompasses a broader range of techniques aimed at improving the health and function of the fascia, the connective tissue that surrounds the muscles, bones, and organs, and everything in the body. The purpose of fascia training aims to improve the flexibility, strength, and resilience of the fascia, leading to better overall movement patterns, reduce risks of injury, and improve athletic performance. So while foam rolling is one aspect of fascia training, many other techniques, including myofascia release, stretching, mobility exercises, and specialized movements designed to target and strengthen the fascia, all come under this one umbrella. So what are the key takeaways? Foam rolling is a specific technique with broader category of fascia training. 
Asha training encompasses a variety of methods, well beyond foam rolling, all aimed at optimizing the health and function of your fascia. Fascia training is the approach we are taking with the cellulite circuit. So if you're not familiar with the cellulite circuit, please visit our website at thecellulitesite.com for more insightful information. So in summary, while foam rolling is a popular and effective method used in fascia training, fascia training itself involves a much more comprehensive approach to maintaining and improving the health of the fascia throughout the body. As we've discussed, there's plenty of supporting evidence that foam rolling and fascia training are very helpful to the body and the connective tissues. Remember, that same connective tissue connects everything in our bodies. So, would it not be reasonable to conclude that if the connective tissue were healthy, supple, and provided a sufficient amount of hydration, that it would have an impact on the amount of visible cellulite? I'm going to digress from the research for a moment to explain to you why I believe my cellulite increased dramatically over four years. I shared this in my introductory episode, but I think it's really going to make sense here. Five years ago, my lifestyle had shifted dramatically after, sadly, I had to put my dog down. It's amazing that I can even say that without crying. For 12 years, I took him on a daily beach walk. It was never a question. We just got out, rain or shine, and walked together for an hour every day. I was beyond depressed when, in a matter of just five short days, I had to let my little precious baby boy cross the rainbow bridge. A major depression set in, and it really took me some time to wrap my brain around what had just happened. Since then, I've probably taken less than 10 beach walks. My lifestyle had become very sedentary. I started a large project that kept me in my desk chair for hours at a time, some days between 8 and 14 hours, sitting behind my computer for four years. Being sedentary along with very poor posture in the chair had led to what felt like an overnight overload of cellulite development. One of the reasons for that occurring comes full circle from what we were just discussing before I digressed. Since fascia is the connective tissue that connects everything in our bodies, I think I said that five times already, and I was relatively sedentary, I had very poor posture, which led to muscle imbalances, doesn't it stand to reason that I would have caused restrictions or matted my fascia in those areas? I believe that this is what the controversy boils down to. You'll find thousands of videos and articles on the internet stating that foam rolling decreases cellulite. But what foam rolling is actually doing is keeping our fascia healthy. While we're aiming at finding effective solutions for cellulite reduction, maintaining our overall health is first priority. Given that fascia depends on an adequate amount of fluid, it's logical to consider that the steps recommended in the cellulite circuit aim to maintain fascia suppleness, enhance hydration, and supply essential nutrients to cells. Additionally, our goal is to improve blood flow, which has the potential to reduce the appearance of cellulite by delivering more oxygen and nutrients to the skin and underlying tissues. However, improving blood flow alone will not entirely eliminate cellulite. It's just one spoke in the wheel toward reduction. So, my ladies, in conclusion, if you haven't already, discover the numerous benefits of using foam rolling for your overall health and well-being. While foam rolling is often associated with cellulite reduction, its advantages extend far beyond that. From improving flexibility and range of motion to reducing muscle soreness and enhancing circulation, regular foam rolling can be a valuable addition to your wellness routine. Embrace the foam roller as a versatile tool for promoting muscle recovery, relieving tension, myofascial release, and supporting overall physical health. I hope that this educational episode provided you some valuable insights. Should you have any topics in mind for future episodes, we'd love to hear it. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Until then, empower your journey one day at a time, my beautiful friends. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning into the Cellulite Site. 
We appreciate you being part of our community, dedicated to exploring and sharing insights on cellulite health. Connecting with confident women like you is what makes this journey so fulfilling. Our mission is to simplify your path to progress and spare you from months of uncertainty. If you're ready to take your journey to the next level, visit thecellulitesite.com to grab your cellulite circuit checklist. Embark on your transformative journey today and in the coming weeks, witness firsthand how these concepts can make a positive impact. Remember, it's not just about absorbing information intellectually. It's about committing to the work and celebrating the results. A quick reminder, the content shared is based on personal experiences and perspectives and is not medical advice.